So tonight I thought I'd do something a little different and run you through a multicam edit of a mate's band I filmed a few months back. Uh, the band's called We Set Sail. They're an awesome band. Well, they were an awesome band. This was their last show, so they had decided to pack it up after 10 years of playing together. And I really wanted to make sure they had something awesome to kind of remember the gig by. So the first thing I needed to do was rope a couple of mates into helping me shoot this. Uh, so there was three of us on the night. I really wanted to throw as many cameras at it as possible. I couldn't quite get the, uh, the 25 cameras that uh, a Taylor Swift concert might have, but we threw nine at it. We had three of them operated and then six kind of static. One of the cameras was an 8K camera. I used that knowing that I'd probably crop in and use multiple angles out of the one shot. So that got us up to about 12 angles to use in the multicam edit out of nine cameras. I'm sure there's probably a thousand different ways that people can do this. This is just the way I chose to do it. It serves me well. So let's jump into the computer and have a look at uh, how I did this multicam edit. So we're in Final Cut and you can see all the angles or cameras that I had popped into the multicam edit. The R5C was a fixed camera. The Eva was fixed. Kyle had the C70 on the right side of stage. Sam had an A7S on the right side of stage. Then we had four GoPros, two of them kind of either side of the bend, the drummer. And then we had one on the left side, kind of shows the crowd and members on this side. And then we had a GoPro on Ben's kit, nice and low, so you can kind of see him moving around the kit, which is really awesome. The R5C was shooting 8K, so this is where I used those additional crop-ins to kind of make a couple of different extra cut points. There's four members up front, so sometimes two of them are singing, sometimes three of them. There was kind of a lot going on for just three people to capture, so that's why we used nine. I thought the GoPros held up really well given... Yeah, they're not really designed for indoor and at night. I just asked the boys to shoot whatever they thought was good from their sides. On my camera, I think I was shooting the R5. I was on a tripod, but just with the uh, 70 to 200. And I was just picking off whatever I thought was the main action at any one time. So I'll play a little uh, piece of the timeline now so you can see how it kind of comes together. And then I'll talk through a bit further about the different digital movement that I added in to mimic handheld or cameras that were actually operated. Just enjoy this for a minute. So you can kind of see how in the edit I just jumped around the different angles trying to pick off the best movement happening at any one time. With a multicam edit obviously you can see all the angles playing at one time which is super cool so you can kind of get a good glimpse of if something's happening that's worth chucking on. For the shots that were static that I added movement. So this is the Eva which is just a fixed wide and then I've just put a you know, right to left pan. And then that cuts back into the R5, which I was operating. So I kind of think that just adds a nice bit of movement versus it being static. So I'll just, I'll turn that off. And we'll just watch it back. Versus having it on. So nice and subtle, but I think it, it definitely adds to it. Sometimes if it was a really short use of a clip, I wouldn't add any movement to, but I was also pretty under the pump at this time with client work. So I think I only had about 15 hours to throw at this. So there's probably things I'd change now going back if I had more time, but uh, I thought it came together really well overall. Oh, so this is one of the R5C angles, the, the crop in. And then that's just, a, that looks pretty much like a, yeah, the Final Cut's handheld effect. I'll just turn that off so you can see what it would look like without. It's much of a muchness really, but I kind of like it with. Just gives that little bit of flavor. So that one there is an operated shot. So this is the R5 with me. Lifting up. Jimmy, 
that's the R5C clip. So again, that one's yeah, total digital movement. So. Again, you could happily leave it not there, but pop it on. Just adds adds to the variety, I think. So in this particular song, I mustn't have put any GoPro movement in, but you can basically save your any custom stuff you do. So you just drop that on. And so that was a yeah, quick way to add a bit of movement. I'll just show you with off again. So in general, I'm a pretty big fan of movement in my work. So just out of interest, this is inside the multicam timeline itself, I guess. So one of the problems we did run into is a couple of cameras did overheat and uh, die towards the end of the hour and 20 hour-ish set. So yeah, so my R5 lasted 45 minutes before it overheated. I quickly swapped over the R5C to the zoom lens and used that as the, the main cam. So these last two clips here are the R5C once they became the operator camera. Also one of the GoPros died which was the side side of stage one so that overheated 45 minutes in or so and the a7s died at some stage two that's up here so i think it overheated in the middle then sam got it going again and then it, it died for the last little part as well so there you go that's a quick explanation of uh, how i did a mate's multicam edit i definitely recommend go check out we set sales YouTube channel, Instagram, and Spotify. Really great band, really good music. Sad to see them go, but uh, I'm totally stoked I got to be a part of the last gig and kind of uh, hopefully cement their memory of what their band was and the, uh, the 400 people that were there. Hopefully uh, will watch it and enjoy it as well.